Hello. Hi, is this the uh, accountant for uh, Kashmir Technical Football Club? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, Sean Does FM, the new manager here. Look, I just want to make sure before I get too carried away before the start of the season, the transfer budget, $1.6 million, is that actually right? Because it does seem like a lot of money for a well professional National League football club. The budget is correct. It's correct, yes? Yes, boss. So, so I can spend it all if I want? Yes, boss. Moving over to the wage budget side as well? Yes, boss. Really? Yes, boss. Because, you know, I, I had an issue at the previous football club and they almost went into administration and it kind of... I mean, that could kind of happen here if I go too crazy. Like, so you should, I should actually spend most of the money? Spend it all. It's not your problem. You're right, it's not my problem. Thank you, Mr. Accountant. I like you. I like you a lot. There's a party in the streets and the city's on fire. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 40 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with the All Whites. And I bet you get this part right, Kashmir Technical. And coming up today, we're going to play our first two games with our new team down in the New Zealand National League in particular to start off the Southern League part of the season. Two home games will take on Ferry Mead Bays as well as Otago University. Run you guys for our squad and hopefully get off to a good start as we look to make the top two and qualify for the National League Championship. And as well as that, we'll do a quick recap of a couple of friendlies that we have played with the All Whites since we did the big unveil in yesterday's episode. So if you're looking forward to all that coming up today, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel or are new here, since we made the switch from AFC Auckland, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but gone for a couple of months off the back, of yesterday's episode, as I said, we did do the big unveil of our club for our time now in the save in the National League of New Zealand. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Also, had a recap of a couple of friendlies with the All Whites in that one as well. Before we get stuck into some Kashmir tech stuff, we are just going to recap a couple more friendlies. We have played these, our last ones, before we enter the 2028 version of the OFC Nations Cup. First up, both these games are away. We took on Cape Verde. And to be honest with you, we played the absolute toilet in this game away from home. Cape Verde here in the blue. They were just all over us, especially in the first half of this game. Giovanni there gets that one past Alex Paulson to make it 1-0 around about the 15 minute mark. And then right on the stroke of the half hour mark, Lopez here is on the ball, starts to make his way for long range effort. That's just a screamer there. Into the top right corner, do have some chances in the second half, which did come off of the world work, but unfortunately, we suffer a 2-0 defeat, which to be fair, Cape Verde, not as bad a team as I thought they'd be all the way up these days, in 56th on the world ranking, so unfortunately, got a bit humbled there by Cape Verde, the Tubolos Azuis, I believe is how you might say that nickname, not too sure about that one, but off the back of that, bit of a rivalry here, in terms of our country, as we took on South Africa. And we played much better in this game over at the Oppenheimer Stadium. Got off to a decent start. He actually played quite well throughout all the first half. But just before halftime here, Sloan Rodriguez, despite the efforts there of Williams, does put that one into the back of the net to give us a 1-0 lead. And then from a throw in here, just shy of the hour mark. No Libby Kache for this game. He got injured against Cape Verde. But nice ball there from Justin Keat to slot through the Wayne train. Make it 2-0. I thought from here, should see this out. But then they score here from a corner. A number of chances which do get blocked and come off the post eventually. Duluk puts that away to make things interesting. 2-1 with around about 15 minutes left. And late on, poor pass there from Sloan Rodriguez. And somehow the Magopa is on side. Paulson comes out, doesn't get to it. And we bottle that and do end up with only a 2 all draw from over in South Africa, as I said. Definitely played a lot better in this game, but does feel like a game that we should have got a win from. So a bit of a frustrating international window there, South Africa. Ranked around about where we are in terms of of the world ranking actually these days they're level with us because off the back of that window we are equal 69th nice albeit not so nice because we have just dropped down slightly because of those results and as i said coming up next for us it is the ofc nations cup the second time we're playing this in the save of course one of the benefits i suppose of the fact that we've left afc off and had to wait a little while to get started in the national league is we've almost gone through a full year of the save over the course of the last couple of episodes, now made our way forward to the 2028 OFC Nations Cup. And we're in the pool with New Caledonia, the Solomon Islands, and Tahiti. 
should be hot favorites for that when it does kick off in June. Just need to finish top three in our group to make sure we'll be taking part in the OFC World Cup qualifiers, but obviously being New Zealand ranked a lot higher than our opposition these days, we should be winning that like we did at the first time of asking with the All Whites. That's what's going on in terms of the national team off the back of getting this job here at Kashmir Technical. In yesterday's episode, we have got through quite a few transfers going in to the start of the National League or the Southern League part of the season here with Kashmir Tech. These days, actually, the highest ranked team out of the Southern League teams, no longer a Christchurch United above us in terms of that season preview. We'll show that shortly, but here's our team going in to the start of the season. I won't run through all the transfers because we'll be here for quite a while, but this is what our team does look like in terms of the best 11. Josh Hawkins will be our goalkeeper for this season. He was a player that we actually signed during the course of yesterday's episode, under 23 goalkeeper for New Zealand. Good potential. We'll see what he can do in goal, having picked him up on a free transfer. So a good young goalkeeper there, and one of our required two under 20 players that do need to play in these National League games, I believe it is, indeed it is, and also a maximum of five foreign players in the squad. One of those foreign players is our right back still here, in Thibaut Orbitin, a 25-year-old from Senegal. We'll just check how long it is until he might qualify as a New Zealander quite a while. And even then, these players at this level, the foreigners at this stage of the save, not that good in terms of being future prospects for the All Whites compared to the players that we could sign when we were up at AFC Auckland. Just bear that in mind, not too sure how many of these foreigners will get called up once they do qualify, considering the drop in standard from the A-League to the National League. Our centre-back partnership, Lamuli Nitsengashe, is the first of our centre-backs. We signed him for 20k from Auckland City. Quite a promising centre-back, three-star current ability and five-star potential, albeit only four stars of that. Is gold, obviously. Partially South African, but was born in Wellington. Somehow ended up at Auckland City and came through at West Auckland. But we've signed him for £20,000, the same fee that we spent on our son during yesterday's episode. Alongside him at centre back, Bailey Stevenson picked him up on a free transfer coming previously from Manurewa and East Coast Bays, 22 years old, two and a half star current ability and four star potential. Doesn't like big matches and is injury prone, but hopefully. We don't play that many big matches considering the stature of our club, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. A great time fringe play, but actually is one of our better centre backs in the new signing at left back. We got rid of the previous player who played internationally for Botswana. We found a foreigner who was better, a lot younger, and Brazilian, which is always a plus. This is Rossane Baguio. He is a left back, 19 years old, just turned that recently. He looks really promising, not too sure if he'll be good enough in terms of a future all-white prospect, but certainly the best player at our club, and is actually now ranked the best player in the National League overall. In terms of the technicals, they're not too great. The mentals get a bit better, but the physicals, they look really, really good. Hopefully, he can do a good job for us there at left back. Also worth mentioning, uh, going with that 4 2 3 one vertical ticky tackle we did use at AFC Auckland, the changes come at wing back. Just usual wingbacks instead of the complete wingback seeing as we have dropped down a level. Did think that might be a sensible approach in terms of the midfield. Another foreigner here in Louis Munoz will start as the defensive midfielder. He's from Chile, 24 years old, three and a half star current ability, four star potential. And we picked him up on a free after he left Universidad Catalica. So that's one of our new signings here, a foreigner in that defensive midfield position. The deep line playmaker comes from Australia. And Alessandro Lapano, of course, Australians and Cook Islanders, they do count as local players. Got him on a free after he got released by Melbourne City. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He does look like a decent option for us, does the 23 year old Australian. And going forward to the attacking midfield, Nathan Walker is going to be our right wing starter inside forward on attack, 22 years old. Good current ability at four stars and potential as well at four and a half previously. He was at Fencibles, but was available to sign on a free, so we've done that. And in terms of on the other side, actually chucked Adam Does FM, my son, out as a left winger, because we did find a good foreigner to come in and play as that central attacking midfielder. And also, when we did use him at AFC Auckland, Adam, he did score more goals when playing out on that left-hand side compared to up front. So we're going to try him as a left winger inside forward on attack, but obviously 
a player we're very familiar with, being my son, and he came through one of the early youth intakes at AFC Auckland, and the player that we replaced him with in central attacking midfield, another Brazilian, Emerson Ariosa, he comes here on a free from Morelia. He looks fairly promising, four stars current ability, five star potential, albeit that last star is whited out. Attribute wise, there's certainly better Brazilians out there, but determination's quite good, and compared to most players in the National League, he's a pretty good one. And up front, we are going with from the Newcastle Jets. We've actually signed Mohamed Al Ghazali. He comes here for £20,000, a quite popular transfer fee in this window for us. From the Jets, Zairaki, but also part Australian. That's why he qualifies as a local player and does look like a pretty good striker for this level with that four star current ability and that five star potential, albeit yet again, is a player who can be quite injury prone. And the bench that we're going with, only five players are allowed. On the bench, we've got a backup wing back who can cover both sides. Another foreigner, as you know, the wing backs here in New Zealand aren't that great. So we've gone with a foreigner here in Iskander Mzagi. He is a Tunisian with two and a half star current ability and three and a half star potential to be fair. Ideally, we'd use that slot on a non foreigner, but we'll see if we can change that going into the second season of this save. And also on the bench for us, Sean Stride. This was actually our record transfer going in to this season. £140,000 to get him from McCarthy FC, but decent potential and free star current ability for the 18 year old Australian. And as well as that, on our bench, we've got Giorgio Pajas. He was a defensive midfielder who we did sign before Louis Munoz. That's where he would usually play, but 21 years old from Australia. Got him on a free from Adelaide United. We did get team reports on all the A League teams and the under 19s. So that's where quite a few of these signings they do come from. In terms of our attacking midfield option, that will be Declan Tyndall for now. We've got a signing in the works for that position, which might come through before our second game of today's episode. But he's solid, two and a half star current ability and three star potential. And up front, Nathan Symes, he is our striking option from New Zealand, 25 years old, and that same two and a half star current ability and potential. But yet again, got another signing in the works who could replace him as our best backup options. And the other players in our squad, a couple of goalkeeping options. Kevin Ward, we're trying to get rid of because he's older than me, which is never good. But going down further, Matt Ford is our backup goalkeeper. Different one to the one we had at AFC Auckland. That was Matthew Ford. No doubt it's going to be clear as mud, but it's a different player. And also capped for the New Zealand under 23s. And as well as that, we've got a centre back there. And Paney, not the best in terms of current ability or potential, but will do a job for us as our fourth choice going down further. Isaac Hover we signed from McCarthy FC on the very cheap to be our backup at left back to the Brazilian with three and a half star current ability and four star potential. Quite good for an Australian who, as I said, does not count as a foreigner. Also in our squad, Jacob Richards is the backup right winger. Not too much current ability or potential, though. He could potentially be making his way out of the team when a new signing hopefully does come through during the course of today's episode. And also that is the case for Zachary Kerpel, an Australian striker who is actually under big currently. From the North Geelong Warriors, the rest of the players in our squad, Ryan Hanoi signed from Adelaide United on the cheap as a backup deep blind playmaker. As you can see, not actually natural in that defensive midfield position, but can do a decent job better than what we did have here at the club. So Ryan Hanna is a young Australian backup here. At Cashmere Technical, Brian Lee is another deep line playmaker option, to be fair. Should probably chuck him in the B team now. Elijah Just is a former all-white, but honestly, he's only third choice on both wings for us. He might be the backup, though, in terms of central attacking midfield. So an interesting situation there with Elijah Just, the player you would have thought would be one of the better ones here at Cashmere Technical, but currently he is out with some torn knee ligaments out for two to seven weeks. He's going to be missing for the start of the season. And Kai Smith is a youngster who can also play in that central attacking midfield homegrown club and does have a decent amount of potential. That's our first team squad going into our first season here at Kashmir Technical. Quite a few new players compared to what we did have come when we arrived here at the start of yesterday's episode. And we're about to get stuck in to the Southern League. These are the teams that do take part in this league. It is the league with the least numbers compared to the other regional leagues that you do need to qualify from to get to the National League Championship. We need to finish in the top two, but we should definitely be doing that. There's what the Central League does look like 
10 teams in that one. The top three go through Havelock North, of course, the other team that we did sort of consider joining before deciding that Kashmir Technical was a better idea. And up north, they get four qualifying spots, but two teams get relegated in a 12-team league. And of course, the extra team in the National League Championship are the reserves of the Wellington Phoenix. And in terms of the season preview, can't do it for individual leagues. But as you can see, we are the second favourites in behind Auckland City. So certainly should be making our way quite comfortably out of the Southern League. And then we'll see just how well we do match up with the big guns here in New Zealand, like those guys as well as Wellington Olympic. But these days, we are predicted to be the big dogs down here in the South Island, even more so than Christchurch United, who are certainly the biggest gun in the South Island currently in terms of real life. In that Southern League and the other team in the OFC Champions League this season, if you are wondering, is Western Suburbs from the Central League. So we should be going quite close, hopefully, to winning the title this season in terms of the overall National League. And even if we don't do that, as long as we make the final, then we will make our way into the OFC Champions League for the second season of our time here. And Cashmere Technical, but first up today, we do take on Ferry Mead Base. Just going to try and find where these guys are on the season preview. They're all the way down in 25th. That should be a team that we can beat. To be fair, we should be pretty strong in the Southern League. Things might get a bit more interesting if we can make our way through like we should to that National League Championship, which is a bit of a sprint, just one game against each team. And even then, it is just one game. You don't even do it home and away, just the one-off game against each team to see who will finish in those top two places before a grand final. But should be being Ferry Me Bays. And off the back of that, also should be being Otago University because they are down in 28th. So the BFIA should be making a bit of a statement here in today's episode about being the best team, hopefully, in the South Island. But before we get stuck in to our first game in charge competitively at Kashmir Technical against Ferry Me Bays, we will do a tour of our home ground because we didn't do that in yesterday's episode. Both of these games today are at home. But of course, we have moved down to Christchurch from Auckland. So before we actually have a look at our home ground, I should probably find somewhere to live. So before we can find somewhere to live, obviously we need to figure out what part of Christchurch we are actually in here with Kashmir Technical. Garrick Memorial Park is our home ground. There's certainly a better view of this soon instead of that fenced off thing, which does look like it was taken during COVID times, but it is in the suburb of Wollston. So need to try and find a house here in Wollston. So off we go to a property website, which is definitely not sponsoring me, but lots of options here. We should have a lot of money considering these guys are paying us more than we were getting at AFC Auckland. They had a massive transfer budget, which we certainly made the most of to strengthen that squad. So just gonna see here really what property does look the nicest, that one, doesn't look too bad on Pioneer Lane. If anyone in Wollstone is currently in the market for a house, I've got your back here. It does look a little bit granny flat though. Not too sure if that would suit. We'll go down a bit further. Not sure about that one. That one looks a slightly better, but keep making our way down. That one's double story. We'll just try and save the hassle of walking upstairs. Not that I'm down fit, but still. Not too sure about that. Some business places there. Not too sure if we want to stay in a concrete jungle. That one doesn't look too bad inside. Not too terrible. We'll see if that might end up being a good option for us. Really trying to find something where I can do some stuff with the team in terms of bonding, especially considering we are actually a professional club. Not too many of those in the New Zealand National League. Some of these houses are looking quite tidy but we should have a fair bit of money saved up off the back of our time at AFC Auckland. That certainly looks a bit granny flat slash retirement village. Just going to go down a bit further and see if we can find something which might be a bit better in terms of what it's got around the property itself. And we might have finally found it here, Luxury Living Oasis. That sounds like what we want while we are down in Christchurch. Already quite intrigued by it seeing as it's on a place called Thacker's Key, which does sound like just an amazing street to live on in Wollstone. It is quite expensive in terms of New Zealand houses, albeit compared to Auckland, this shouldn't be too bad. It's got a pool table. I think we're gonna take this one. We'll just see what else is there. Another shot there of the pool table. Nice amount of seating there. There are stairs, but to be fair, if it's got a pool table, I think I can handle walking up and down stairs to get to there. Also a little bit of there of what looks like 
somewhat of an indoor theater maybe. It's got some tiered seating and some lazy boys. This does look like a very, very nice property, especially for the price, but this does look like a very nice spot. Hopefully pool table is included. Not too sure about the bar style eating area. It does kind of feel like you're at a pub, which might not be the worst idea, but I think that's our property gonna go to Thicker's Key down in Wolston. And just checking how long it will take to drive to our home ground from our new accommodation in Christchurch, only five minutes, that should be fine. A little bit concerningly, there is a river to go over now. That was a bit of an issue for us on our bus trips when we were up at AFC Auckland, but hopefully once I do it a few times, we can be okay. Also nearby where we're staying is the Christchurch Bull Breed Rescue. I don't know what that is. Does that place rescue bulls or something? If so, that could be a bit interesting near where we're staying, but it's a nice short drive up there to Garrick Memorial Park where we will play our games here at Cashmere Technical. And before we check out our ground, thankfully that Bull Breed Rescue, because I was just wondering what on earth that was. It's a bulldog rescue, so I think we'll be okay there. Don't mind dogs as much as wild bulls. And thankfully we made our way towards the ground safely, got over that bridge in between our house and where we are playing now. I think somewhere here is the entrance to the ground. Just need to figure out exactly where it is. Because to be fair, this is kind of like non-league England in terms of trying to figure out where you're playing these games. But I think we might be going up here club entry closed i imagine when it's actually game day this will all be open here at cashmere technical now we go through the gate looks a bit nicer than when that other picture was taken we'll just make our way here down the end of the driveway and here it is garrick memorial park where we're going to be playing our games here our home games at cashmere technical nice decent sized car park which is a plus as you can see a couple of people might be staying the night before the game in their camper vans i imagine that truck there is for the tv coverage because of course i think fifa tv do the coverage of the national league these days we'll just make our way down here a little bit more and see if there's something a bit more branded in terms of cashmere technical not too sure if there is i'll just see what that is that's the wolston club which might be the home of the club rooms itself we'll just see if we can spot something that's a bit more club themed than what we've got going on currently not too sure if there is we'll see what this is this might be the changing rooms for the boys before the game down this end but more car parking lots of car parking here at garrick memorial park but now let's try and get a look at the actual ground itself and this is the best we can do in terms of 360 view so i think around there is what we just drove past before in terms of the wolston club but here is the main ground here for cashmere technical in garrick memorial park does look pretty roomy very non-league like is the best description that i can give it hopefully be a good atmosphere here on an actual game day this is our home ground here the beefy of the turf looks in pretty good nick so no complaints there and hopefully we can get off to a good start with our new team and cashmere technical as we take on first up very me bays and here are the team sheets for our first game in charge here at Cashmere Technical. You saw our team before when we ran for our squad going into this new season. Let me know if you want me to bring these up because not too sure if you actually care who plays for these other teams now. Not too sure if the profile of the New Zealand League is quite the same as the ALE, but they were very many base they were going, it looked like, with a 4 3 3. Should be staying the season off here with a win. And three minutes into our first game, we get the first highlight here at Cashmere Technical. It was a goal kick there to Fury Me Bays in the dark blue unfortunately don't win that ball back and Nicholson here does have the ball for the away team one of our Christchurch based rivals in the southern league but good tackle there from Al Ghazali and now Adam is on the ball our son Walker gets playing behind nicely squares that one for Al Ghazali but the flag goes up of course being the New Zealand National League no VAR bit too cheap for that unlike the A-League the first goal gets ruled out for offside but shortly off the back of that now we have a free kick on that left hand side looking there who was that for might have been our new left back in Bagageo but now we're on the ball here just outside of the box he's back on the ball here but now plays that one over to Bailey Stevenson Munoz with a back pass there to the Australian in Lapane now Stevenson back on the ball our Brazilian left back the best player in the league apparently he just holds things up here we'll be interested to see how we get on with this vertical tiki taka at such a low level good work there from Munoz to keep hold of the ball but pre-season our last couple of results 
not too good, albeit didn't put out a full strength team for some of those games. Good chance there for Walker, but goes the wrong side of the post. So it's still no all, albeit it's a shocking takeover from Oliver Milicic, who might be a player from AFC Auckland. That name does seem oddly familiar. He gets a red card off the back of that. We'll go attacking. We're going to play this one against 10 men. And only a few minutes off the back of that. Now we have a free kick in a dangerous spot looking there. Former son on the edge of the box. But thanks for that clearance. It now finds Lapane. And now we try and get something going there through our Senegalese right back. They try and clear it there through Fury Me Base. But thankfully Stevenson is there to tidy things up. It is now Rosini who is on the ball for us. Our Brazilian left back now Stevenson. Lots of touches early, looking there for Adam Does FM, but the Brazilian, good work from him to try and get us here on the attack. Squares it for Adam Does FM, our first goal scorer at Kashmir Technical. It's my son, so proud. This is definitely going to be his level, and we take a 1 0 lead to be fair. This now should be an absolute cakewalk for us against 10 men. But good work there from the Brazilian, and Adam Does FM scores our first goal at Kashmir Technical. And only a couple of minutes on from that opening goal, as you'd imagine, we're putting all the pressure here on Ferry Me Bays, who are down to 10 men, but a goal kick there. That's rather fortunate that tackle on our striker didn't connect, because that would probably have been another red card. But now Munoz finds himself in space inside the box and puts that one away nicely in the bottom left corner. And from now, this one might get just a little bit ugly. We might check later to see if that player who got the red card was indeed a former AFC Auckland one. But nice work there from Walker. He'll pick up an assist, and it's a good finish there from the Chilean and Louis Munoz to make it 2-0 right on the 20-minute mark. And in fact, just off the back of that, another highlight here of Fran inside of the final third. Walker floats this one far post, does FM with a header into the ground, and our son is on a hat-trick in his Kashmir technical competitive debut. This certainly does look like his level a bit easier for him than the A-League and to be fair, we did rescue him from Cambria United, as I said at the time. No one deserves to be stuck at Cambria United, especially my son. He should enjoy things here a bit more in Christchurch. Even post the earthquake, to be fair, Christchurch these days has rebuilt a bit more off the back of that. But does FM on a hat trick as we make our way up to the half hour mark? with a 3-0 lead. And very shortly from back of me trying to wrap up the previous highlights. Now we've got a throw on yet again here inside of the final third. Does FM go searching for it and puts it away. It's a very similar goal to the previous one. It's another link up between him and our Brazilian young left back. He gives it a big old fist pump. Very similar to what I used to do when I got a wicket when playing cricket. So that's interesting that the game knows that, knows my celebrations from my cricket playing days. But Adam does FM with a hat trick inside half an hour. We have four nil up over Ferry Mead Bays. And lots of action early in this game, as you'd imagine, especially off the back of Ferry Mead Bays going down to 10 men, but another throw for us here inside of the opposition half. Does FM this time might be looking for an assist. It's a good chance there for Lozane, but that one comes off the woodwork all over Ferry Mead Bays here with a 4 0 lead inside the first half. And just about to make our way into half time here, obviously things are going very well, and yet again, a chance for us here to launch an attack, albeit this time from deep inside of our own half. Hawkins on the ball, I think for the first time we've actually seen him in this game so far. Nice ball over the top there for Does FM. He gets brought down. That's going to be a penalty now to be fair. I'm not too sure who's taking these. We'll see who it is. Hopefully Does FM. It is not. It's all between our captain right back. And I should probably change that at half time because that was a very poor penalty. Thankfully, shouldn't prove too costly in a situation like this. But that one not the best one, albeit a decent save there from the Ferry Me based goalkeeper to keep it at 4 0 before half time. I think that's going to be it for the first half as well. Nothing happens in the three minutes of added time. But obviously, the early red card there to Milicic did prove a big factor in that first half. And Ferry Me Bays off the back of that have done next to nothing. We've been completely dominant. Everyone out there is doing a brilliant job. So we'll make no subs, especially with only three allowed in this New Zealand National League. We'll get the second half underway with a 4 0 lead. And we have to wait until the hour mark for the first highlight of the second half, which is a bit surprising, even more surprising. It's actually Ferry Me Bays here who are on the ball, looking to do something really for the first time in this game. Fuentes now on the ball down their left-hand side. Some good short passing here. And Ling goes back to Fuentes. Squeeze that one nicely for Joe Green. And we concede against the 10 men of Ferry Me Bays. To be fair, 
that might help us out in terms of a clean sheet bonus, albeit to be fair, not too sure how many players are on those deals here in a league this low, but that's actually quite a well worked goal there from Ferrymead Bays to make it 4 1. And about five minutes on from that goal back to Ferrymead Bays, now hopefully a chance for us here to get our lead back to 4 as we have the ball and start to make our way into the opposition half. Our captain Albertine off the back of that missed penalty late in the first half plays that 4 to Walker, who might look to do this himself. He does great effort there. From a tight angle, Bukhari got a decent touch on that with his arm but couldn't keep it out of the back of the net. That is a very good individual goal from our first choice right winger here in Nathan Walker, formerly of Fencibles these days, a Kashmir Tech man, and he makes it 5-1. And just making our way into injury time in this game, we made some subs a couple of minutes ago. Mzalgi at left back, Pahas in the deep line playmaker on, also Symes up front for our striker from the Newcastle Jets. And late on, Louis Munoz will score... From a header, he picks up a double in this game to go alongside the hat trick to Does FM. And also, there was another goal scored. It was to Nathan Walker, of course. He scored the one in the second half before this, but that's a nice header there, top left corner from Luis Munoz, the Chilean. Good debut from him in that defensive midfield role. But that is a very convincing win, albeit as expected after Oliver Milicic did pick up that red card there early for Ferrymead Bays. Might just check in here and see if he is indeed. A former AFC Auckland player. He's currently on loan from them. So one of our former players there and Oliver Milicic making sure we get off to a good start here at Kashmir Technical. That is very, very interesting how that's happened as well as the Adam Does FM hat trick in his debut here at Kashmir Tech. But that is a comprehensive win. We'll just see what the table does look like going in to the second match day. Actually, a two week gap in between now and then. I think a reason for that is because. Some of the other leagues, they have more games to play compared to us here down in the Southern League. But currently, we are on top of the table off the back of that comprehensive 6-1 win over Ferrymead Bays. And we are back about to play the second game of today's episode against Otago University. Again, we are at home at Garrick Memorial Park. Been a couple of weeks off the back of that first game, though, and a bit's happened. But first up, Otago University, as you saw before on the season preview, definitely a team that we should be beating. They lost 4-0 to Christchurch United on the opening day of the season. So it could be a chance for us here to actually see how we compare to the previous standard bearers in the Southern League in the Rams. But before then, we've actually made a couple of transfers. And there's also a bit of an update from AFC Auckland. So some players have come through the door since that first game, as I suggested, a new striker and a right winger. Michael James Gilbert's now the backup to Mohamed Al Ghazali, and he's a good promising striker domestically who left Bay Olympic at the end of last season. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential, certainly an improvement on Symes so he can make his way on the bench. Hopefully, we will give him enough game time to make sure that regular starter does get fulfilled, especially in competitions, hopefully, like the Chatham Cup, which of course these guys were the runners up in last season, and also a new backup in terms of right wing, someone with a bit more current ability and potential compared to James Richard, who these days has gone down to the B team with sign from Wellington Phoenix, Josh Tulurvi, who was in the last year of his contract. We just made sure that we could get him early for a fee of £250, but he is a pretty good player, three and a half star current ability and four star potential. Another player who doesn't like big matches, but as I said, that shouldn't be too much of an issue here in the New Zealand National League. Not too sure if it even counts for a competition like the OFC Champions League. But he's pretty promising, can do a decent job for us as the right wing backup. And behind Nathan Walker, and to be fair, based on the tributes, he should actually probably be starting over himself. We've strengthened up our squad even further off the back of that first game of today's episode. Hopefully can pick up a similar result when we do take on Otago University. Albeit, are going to be missing one of our key players, because Rosane Bagaggio has got injured in training, sprained the ligaments, so he is out for three to six weeks. So it does mean a bit of a shuffle up in terms of our left-back options for the next couple of weeks of the season. Thankfully, it's happened in the Southern League part of the season. If it happened during the National League Championship, that would be a dagger blow, but hopefully still enough squad depth here to get through that. And also, before we play this game, as I said, we have an update on our former club in AFC Auckland. And that is that the manager that they did get in to replace us and Jimmy Van Beren formerly, he was in charge of the Red Cliff Wave. So to be fair, a bit surprising, they even went with a manager who hasn't won a lot in his career, but he got sacked off the back 
of really not being able to win the league. As soon as that was the case, he got the sack, despite the fact that actually they've moved up the table a little bit off the back of where we left things in yesterday's episode. These days, they are up in fifth, but AFC Auckland, they are looking for a new manager. To be fair, looks like the Wellington Phoenix Touchwood will be winning the league in this scenario. Hopefully, they can do the same in real life, even though in real time, they got given a bit of a lesson by Melbourne City last night in real life, but hopefully the Phoenix can hold on and keep the New Zealand domination going there of the A-League, but thought that was worth updating. They're now in search of a new manager, Bill. Not too happy with the work there of Jimmy Van Buren, which is not surprising. Not really sure why I didn't go after a bigger manager, but hopefully we can go two from two here at Kashmir Technical when taking on Otago University. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. A couple of changes on the bench, as you saw before our new signings. Also, Hover, who's usually our backup left back, he's quite injury prone. He's on the bench, and Zalgi will start in place of Bajegio with that injury there. Otago University, 4 4 2. They're not supposed to be very good. Hopefully, we can make it two wins from two and stay on top of the Southern League. And a very early highlight for us here in our favour at Garrick Memorial Park. Hopefully, can back up that good opening day performance with one here against the Scarfies, but we'll see considering that that first game was against 10 men for the most part, but good short passing here on the edge of the box, and does FM will continue his great form from that first game, Nathan Walker will put that one through the hands of Griffith into the top left corner of that, with some good short passing here inside of the final third, Orbitine plays this back into Munoz, goes back to Lapane, does FM, and up to Walker, goalkeeper there probably should be doing better, but we'll take it an early 1-0 lead. And looks like we're going to be on the front foot in this game yet again, as there's another highlight here, a goal kick in favour of Otago Uni, but we get on the counter-attack nice and shortly off the back of that, and Al Ghazali makes his way forward here, down this left-hand side, puts that one into the mixer, for Adam does FM already, his fourth goal of the season, he is looking like a star player, despite the fact in terms of star ratings, he's only ranked at two stars, so it kind of shows this team here at Kashmir Technical not much worse than what we had at AFC Auckland, but this team looks far too good already for some of these ones. In the Southern League, we're 2 0 up after only six minutes here in our second game of the season. Now, Otago Uni going to look here to try and play out from the back, but that is a poor clearance. Lapani can make his way on the end of that one. Does FM nice ball for there for Al Ghazali, but that is a good save and goal from Griffith that time makes up that first save which went through his hands and was the opening goal scored by Nathan Walker. We'll see what happens from the subsequent corner. I haven't seen too many set pieces so far for us here at Kashmir Technical, but that time we put it wide, but turn it up inside the first 10 minutes. And it's actually taken quite a while before we get the next highlight of this game, just past the half hour mark, and it's a throw in there to Otago. You need surprisingly, Jeremy Bay's actually winning their second game of the season, so that's not too good for a team like Nomads when we take them on. I think they're next up for us, so that could be another quite easy game for us. Also, I think Nelson Suburbs are beating Christchurch United. That is a very surprising result after they lost to Selwyn United on the opening day of the season. Some interesting results coming through here in other games in the Southern League, but we're on the attack again. Does FM puts that far post for Nathan Walker? Decent chance, but that one does get saved by Griffith and Goal, albeit right off the back of that. Another highlight does start, but does FM Masana looking very good down here. In the Southern League, we'll see if that can continue throughout the season. And also, when we make our way, like you'd imagine, we should to that National League Championship. Good chance there for Al Ghazali, but that time Griffith, with a decent save, made himself nice and big at short range distance for that shot from the former Newcastle Jets man. But now a corner and well saved it again from the effort of Munoz and Otago Uni are still at 2 0 down. Albeit very short the back of those previous chances. Now it's another corner here. In our favour, a little bit of aerial ping pong here inside the box, and Al Ghazali will pick up the ugliest goal I think so far of the entire save. That one I think took a deflection off an Otago Uni defender, and for some reason Griffith, after making some pretty good saves in the last couple of chances, just doesn't react to that one. To be fair, was quite close to him when that did take a deflection off Taylor. But that's a really fortunate goal for Al Ghazali to make it three 0 and just before half time here, and there might be one more highlight in the first half, a free kick here to Otago Uni. You probably need to score this if they want to keep this one interesting. It goes over the bar. We're still 3-0 in front. 
And that will do it for the first half. Another good performance for us so far here at Kashmir Technical. A 3 0 lead, early goals there to Walker and my son and Adam, and also Al Ghazali with an ugly one late on to make it 3 0. To be fair, Otago Uni got a bit more going late in that first half, but 3 0 in front should be on our way to six points from our first two games. We'll bring on our record signing Sean Stride for Bailey Stevenson on a yellow card, but apart from that, very happy with how this one's going. We'll get stuck into the second half with that 3 0 lead. And it's taken almost 20 minutes, but we eventually get the first highlight here of the second half. Actually quite similar to what happened in that first game, even though this time we are playing, of course, against the 11 men. It looks like it will be the case for the entirety of this one, but poor control from us there. And Huma makes his way down the right-hand side for Otago Uni. Inchin Gassi tries to clear it, goes straight into the head of Smythe Ferguson, and Otago Uni will grab a goal back. And this one could make things interesting with still 25 minutes left, but that, not too sure if that's luck or skill, but it's a bit poor from us, that clearance straight into an opposition player, and they make it 3-1. In fact, shortly off the back of that, have just noticed that Mzalgi at left back struggling will bring on Hover in his place for his debut at Kashmir Tech. 3-1 up with around 20 minutes left. And we've just made our way into the last 10 minutes of this game in a corner here in our favour looking there for Hover at the near post for a debut goal. But unfortunately that one, too much of an angle. It goes past the diving Griffiths. 3-1 as we make our way into the last stages of this game. Munoz now on a red heart. We'll make our last sub. Giorgio Pajas can come on for him. We'll just now make our way into the dying stages of this game. We might even go attacking soon because it did seem to work quite well against Jeremy Bayes. Not too sure if that was because we were playing against the 10 men, or we should be doing that all the time because we are a much better team than some of the ones we are going to be playing here in the Southern League. But some poor passing here late from us, giving Otago Uni a chance here to potentially grab something from this game. But thankfully, the goal scorer in Smythe Ferguson, to be fair, not too sure how much of an idea he had about that goal, which he did score. But he loses control of the ball now. Does FM has been our star player so far. Has my son now, Albertine. Down the right hand side, will pass this one a long way back there to Inchingasi. Kind of at fault for that goal that we did concede, but yet again, it does mean no clean sheet bonus, which might be quite good off the back of the financial issues we did have at AFC Auckland. Good long range effort that one, but it does go just over the bar as we make our way into four minutes of added time. Now, I think we are going to go on to attack and just see what will happen late in this game, but not too sure if we might have left it. A little bit late now, Christchurch United do grab a late equaliser there against Nelson Suburbs, but they are struggling there away at Sexton Field. That's my local team, if you're wondering why I'm so interested in that, as well as the fact that, of course, Christchurch United is supposed to be our biggest threats down here in the Southern League at Kashmir Technical, but Otago Uni might get a late chance here. They do, but good clearance there, I think, off the shot, which was from one of the attackers. So they're getting some late chances here at Otago Uni, but thankfully, Nothing that's going to cost us too much. A little bit sloppy in that second half. It is fair to say, but thankfully did a good job in the first. And we pick up a 3-1 win goals to Walker does FM. And also there was that one, that really messy one to Al Ghazali. Otago Uni actually win the second half, which is a little bit, uh, but to be fair, got the job done in the first 45 minutes. Two wins from two to start off our time here. At Kashmir Technical, it should mean that we stay on top of the table. Just wait and see what the result is in that game between Christchurch United and Nelson Suburbs. It did end up a draw sell when United actually joined with us on points, but our goal differential a lot stronger. So we stay on top of the Southern League. So a good start to our time here down at Kashmir Technical Orby. I think it's fair to say the Southern League might just be a little bit too easy for us. Things might get a bit tougher when we make our way through to the championship stage. Of the National League, also Adam does FM Masan starting off the season in really good form as well as Nathan Walker with free assists. But interestingly, he's the joint top goal scorer at the moment is does FM with a player I'm pretty sure I had back in the Cavisham days with the Hexagon Challenge here and Willem Emming these days. He is up at Auckland City, but good start for us here at Kashmir Technical. Let's have a quick look at what's going on in the other leagues. This is what the Central League does look like. Some of those guys have played three games though. So that table is a little bit funny, but Western Suburbs, one of the teams in the AFC Champions League, are on top of that. And the Northern League also a little bit funny, but Auckland City, as you'd expect, are on top of that one. But that will do for our first gameplay episode here 
at Kashmir Technical. As I said, the Southern League might be just a little bit too easy for us, but hopefully things might get tougher We make our way through to the National League phase and take on some of those teams from up north as well. As the Central Region, but if you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. Now, I'm pretty sure based on today's episode, we can try and fly through the Southern League phase of the season because it does look like based on the two teams we play today, we should be winning most of our games at the very least making our way through to the National League Championship. So we might be able to go through these seasons a bit quicker than we were doing up at AFC Auckland. We are going to be entering the Chatham Cup in the month of May. So that could be something that we do come back for. Might actually end up taking on tougher teams than that compared to what we're doing in the Southern League. But I think we might do that game when we come back next time around. And also take on Selwyn United. They're currently the only other unbeaten team in our league. And it is away from home. So that could end up being a good bus trip for us to another team in the Christchurch area. So that will be the plan for tomorrow's episode, Chatham Cup, first round of that, as we hopefully can pick up a double in our first season here at Kashmir Technical, and also we'll take on Southern United in the Southern League. So until then, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.